Um, okay, so first item in the news, which I think is 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 interesting and important, uh, is the fact that uh, Russia has announced that it is withdrawing from uh, Gerson. Um, Gerson is the only regional capital that uh, Russian forces actually occupied since the beginning of the war. Uh, they tried to occupy Kharkiv. They tried to occupy. Ultimately, uh, they tried to occupy Kiev. They failed with both of those. The one city that they actually managed to occupy is Gerson. Gerson is in the south. Uh, and to the south of Gerson, there is a river. Uh, the Ukrainian forces over the last couple of months have been slowly chipping away at Russian positions all around the city of Gerson and to its east and to its, uh, to its north. And they've been closing in on the city itself. Uh, yesterday, the Russians Russians basically announced that they will be withdrawing from Gerson. They will be withdrawing from the city and handing it over, in a sense, handing control over to the Ukrainians. Uh, this is a major step. It's also a major change. I think the Russians have figured out that if they're going to leave a territory, if they're going to be withdrawing, it's better to do so in an organized fashion. It's better to do so... Um, in a planned fashion than uh, experience the kind of routes that they have experienced both on the east, um, in, in the northeast, and more recently in the Gerson province where the Ukrainians just overrun them and then get a bunch of equipment uh, from them. This way, the Russians will be able to retreat in an orderly way. They'll be able to salvage a lot of the equipment. They'll be able to take it back to the other side of the river. Uh, so... This is a major, major defeat for Putin. It's a major, major defeat for Putin's ambitions with regard to Ukraine. It is one more defeat. Uh, it's one more sign, one more piece of evidence to the complete um, incompetence of the Russian military, both from an equipment perspective, from, uh, from a, a, a manpower perspective, their ability to uh, uh, maintain ground that they took in the first few days of the war uh, is is pathetic, um, and their ability to stand up to uh, Western-equipped Ukrainians it, it just is non-existent. So uh, Russia is clearly failing in its efforts in Ukraine. Ukraine, it's going to take a long time for Ukraine to regain the land. Ukraine's... Um, primarily because Russian uh, military is digging in uh, and, and Putin seems to be committed to as many troops, getting as many troops killed as necessary in order for him to save face in some kind of way, although I'm not sure what way he can save face given the thorough thrashing that, um, you know, that uh, U Ukraine has provided the Russian forces um, in Ukraine. So... It's going to be interesting. It's likely that once the Ukrainians, once the Russians retreat from this northern section of Gerson province and from the city of Gerson, that um, the Ukrainians basically don't try to cross the river and don't try to take the southern part of Gerson because it's just logistically too difficult and, and they expose themselves to Russian firepower. That probably keeps some troops there to keep the Russians busy. But my guess is that they will move uh, their uh, attack to further east, uh, to the province east of Gerson province, and they will try to encircle Russian troops by attacking from there. Uh, they will also uh, continue their focus in uh, Luhansk province and, uh, and, and uh, to try to encircle Russian troops over there and try to break their supply lines. Uh, that will be tough over the winter. The winter fighting is going to be difficult. For the Ukrainians, as it is for the Russians, I think the Ukrainians are probably better positioned to handle it. Their supply lines are better, uh, as well as, of course, the supplies and the support they're getting from the West is substantial. So, uh, you know, huge victory for the Ukrainians. Uh, we'll see how much uh, they can leverage this in the, uh, uh, you know, as winter approaches uh, into more victories. But... Uh, but they've done a phenomenal job. And again, given, uh, given all the experts, the generals, the mainstream media's expectation of the complete capitulation of Ukraine and, and Russian victory, the rights adoration of Putin, and the rights expectation, even on this chat, uh, expectation of a Putin, a quick 
or slow or whatever Putin victory. Uh, I think we're just getting more and more and more uh, confirmation that the Ukrainians, the Ukrainians uh, are defeating the Russians and will continue to defeat the Russians uh, on the battlefield. Uh, what consequence that has, we will have to see. This is going to be another year before we know much more about how this all plays out. But as I've said over and over and over again over the last few months, Russia has lost already. Uh, I mean, the latest figures out of the U.S. Um, Pentagon is that Russia might have lost 100,000 troops. 100,000 soldiers have died in Ukraine, or at least been died or, or, or injured to the point where they can't be soldiers anymore. Most of these are, are professional soldiers. Most of these are, uh, you know, part of the volunteer army that, that Russia had. This is the core of, of the Russian military. Uh, this is a significant percentage of battle-ready forces in Ukraine, in, in Russia, uh, not to mention the number of tanks and the number of other military equipment that they have lost, both that were captured and destroyed. I mean, the waste in lives, the tragedy for the families, the, the tragedy for these young people who, who will never have the opportunity to live a life is horrific. What, what exactly did they die for? For, for Putin's grandeur, for Putin's ambition, for some greater Russia. Most of them never knew what they died for. Most of them never knew what they were fighting for. Uh, you know, you could say the Ukrainians are, are, are fighting for their home, for, they're fighting for their families, they're fighting for, the, for, for, for the, you know, their own freedom. What are the Russians fighting for? They have no clue. What are they dying for? They have no clue. Super sad, super tragedy. A super waste of human life, a super waste of wealth, but primarily of, of human life. Uh, how can, can Russia recover from this? I don't know. How can Russia rebuild an army? I don't know. Remember, Russian uh, birth rates are very low. Uh, they have fewer and fewer young people anyway. They just managed to kill 100,000 young people or make them unproductive. Um, how does Russia ever recover from that? Just to, if from, a, from an economic, cultural perspective. I don't think it can. Again, Russia is a shrinking population, an aging population. This is a this is a fading so-called superpower. This is uh, you know a, a Putin's a fantasy of resurrecting the Soviet Union is dead. Uh, of course, he has also uh, managed to get Sweden, Finland into NATO, something that nobody would have ever expected. Uh, is happening. He has managed to, in some senses, unite the European Union around a cause, anti-Putin cause, uh, and every front. This has been a unmitigated disaster for Russia, and it continues with the news coming out about the Russian retreating from Gerson. So um, uh, I feel for the for the Ukrainians and you know who who are, who are battling day in day out against these Russians, and I feel for the Russian troops who have no clue what they're doing there and why they're there. Um, it's it's you know you could say they could defect or they could escape. It's very difficult, very difficult to 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 you know to actually defect in a situation like this. So they're dying for no fault of their own. Um, all right, so uh, uh, you know that's the uh, that's the update. Uh, on Russia. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution. Uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.